Augmented reality. Everyone has probably heard of it, but not that many people know what it is or what the magnitude of its implication could mean. Augmented reality is not to be confused with that ridiculous virtual reality phase of the 1980s. Augmented reality seems like something straight out of a science fictional futuristic movie, but the odd truth is, it's here today, and it's easily accessible to anyone with a smartphone. In fact, I'll be showing you some augmented reality applications within this video with my own smartphone. Just a few years ago, this phenomena would have seemed absurd, if not impossible to the common man. But as you've seen from my previous videos, mobile technology has been screaming along at a ridiculously fast pace, taking all those who aren't paying attention by surprise. With this new power, augmented reality may just be the thing that will change our lives. It could just be the next step in the way we collect, process and interact with information. It's just a matter of time before major corporations and small companies alike see the limitless potential in this recent marriage of the smartphone and augmented reality. To fully understand just how far we've come, let me show you a small excerpt from a TV show aired in the year 2006. Hollywood has been mixing graphics and the real world for years in movies. The difference is, what used to take millions of dollars and months of work can now be done with a standard PC in seconds. And the applications are endless. Replace that PC with a smartphone and you have the augmented reality or AR of today. So what is AR exactly? Well, let me show you. In its most simple form, AR can be described as the computer-generated modification of a real-world environment in real time. This is usually done through a camera and a software algorithm. So as you can see, I had a piece of paper that served as our reference point for our AR algorithm. And I simply just go to the application called Hands-On AR and open it up. And as you can see, a phone just magically appears in front where that piece of paper would be. So I'm guessing not many people in the world have seen this kind of thing. So as you can see, I can shift it around and move it and the phone will track it in real time. So for all you uh, technology enthusiasts out there, this app has a whole bunch of phones and different uh, makes and models and sizes and even some tablets that you can choose and uh, make them appear in front of your phone. So that's just one little application of augmented reality and you're free to check it out in the description below. So let's take a closer look. Here we have a more three-dimensional object and as you can see everything moves around as you would expect it to and if we stay still and have a look at the clouds you'll see that they are indeed moving across the table surface. And of course if we move our camera angle too far there is a limit to the recognition of the marker point. Of course this is very early days in the AR world and what better place to see the future than a TED talk? Matt Mills has more. So wouldn't it be amazing if our phones could see the world in the same way that we do? as we're walking around being able to, to point the phone at anything and then have it actually recognize images and objects like the human brain and then be able to pull in information from an almost infinite library of, of knowledge and experiences and ideas. Well, traditionally that was seen as science fiction, but now we've moved to a world where actually this has become possible. What we have here is a painting of the great poet Robbie Burns and it's just a normal image. But if we now switch inputs over to the phone, uh, running our technology, you can see effectively what Tamara's seeing on the screen. And when she points at this image, something magical happens. <laughs> but as I move the object around, it's gonna track it and overlay that content seamlessly. Again, the thing that's incredible about this is this is how advanced these devices have become. All the processing to do that was actually done on the device itself. Matt Mills did give one example of an AR application that did catch my attention. So now what I can do is rather than getting the instructions for the device online, um, I can simply point at it, the device is recognised, and then... Begin by plugging in the great ADSL cable, then connect the power, Finally, the yellow Ethernet cable. Congratulations, you have now completed setup. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> As you're probably starting to imagine, the applications are practically limitless. Here's another application that has actually been implemented by users of Matt Mills software. People who have, uh, for example, taken the inside of the engine bay of an old car and tagged up different components within an engine so that if you're stuck and you want to find out more, you can point and discover the information. All right, well, you're probably thinking, that's all well and good, but what do we have right now? What can I download on my smartphone as of this moment? Well, let me show you. There's another application called 3D Compass Plus, 
and this time, instead of using just the camera, it uses your GPS and other positioning systems such as the accelerometer to give a realistic view and real-time update of a compass and your position. It may not be the most cutting edge thing, but it is still a proof of concept. Okay, well let's look at something more universal. Here we have an application called Augment, and this I think is awesome. Anyone from around the world can build a computer-aided model and upload it to this application, and then anyone else around the world can download that model and have that model sit on their table or have that visual representation animated. Let's take a look at a few. So I'm sure you can see that the community had a little bit of fun there. In these early stages of AR, most of the applications are just for fun. So let's move on to something else. This app is called Google Sky Map. It allows you to see the positions of planets with respect to you, using your phone's global positioning system. If you're after more than just planets, there are options to enable star constellations and other points of interest. If that's your kind of thing, it's free to download from the marketplace. It's going to be in the description as well. We can even play games using AR. This one's called AR Defender, and as you just saw, I drew my own reference point, and the tower just popped up just like that. The point of this game is to defend a tower by shooting any enemies that come along your way. There are also planes that fly over and drop bombs and things like that. You simply just tilt the position of the phone to aim and tap the fire button to fire. But unfortunately, I couldn't demonstrate it properly because both my hands are in use. But you get the idea. There are a few AR applications that do hold some exciting opportunities but haven't been mentioned explicitly in this video. One of these is the AR browser. Yes, you heard right, the augmented reality web browser. It may be a few years before this kind of thing becomes commonplace, maybe in the next four years, but the strange thing is there are some that have existed and do exist today. Once again, a link to two of these will be noted in the description below. Two such web browsers are Juneo and Leia. Hopefully I pronounced those correctly. But before we end this video and reach the conclusions of what to make of augmented reality, let's take a quick break and then we'll be back after this. So welcome back guys, hopefully you're enjoying the second episode of Cold Fuston TV. But back to the story. What would augmented reality be without Google Glass? Google Glass was unveiled in 2012 and is expected to be released in the year 2014. Strangely enough, the reaction to the unveiling was largely lukewarm. It may be due to the fact that the general public is resistant to change and may not see the bigger picture of what augmented reality could mean. I'm sure we'll look back on the 2012-2013 days of augmented reality and laugh at how primitive everything was. It reminds me of how multimedia first emerged in the mid-1990s. But anyway, now I'll pass it on to you. What do you guys think? Would you like to see augmented reality as an integral part of your life? Do you think it would be too intrusive? Or do you think it would actually be beneficial? I'd like to hear what you think in the comments below. There's links to a few amazing augmented reality demos in the description below. So have a look at that if you've got a spare minute or two. I'm sure you'll like them. Anyway, that rounds out today's episode. So as usual, don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you again for another video. A list of music will follow this as usual. Once again, if you could share this video, that would be absolutely amazing. Cheers for watching and have a great day.
Why are you still watching this? Anyway, since you're still here, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.